Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to replace the turbo control valve on a Volvo C30 T5. The same procedure can also be found on the Volvo S40, V50, and C70 models from the same generation. This is a 2007 model. This car will be also getting a TCV upgrade thanks to IPD USA. I am using IPD's heavy duty turbo control valve for the P1 cars. A link to this product will be included in the description below. With a failing turbo control valve, such as what I'm experiencing with this car, you'll notice increased fuel consumption, a loss of high RPM power, overboosting and low RPM, which increases power, an irregular power band, and in severe situations, a check engine light or limp mode, meaning no turbo operation at all. While I don't have a boost gauge installed in this car, if you are familiar with the power band of your vehicle, you can certainly feel the turbo operation malfunction. If you tend to drive your vehicle more spirited, there is a higher chance for the valve to fail as you're hitting higher boost levels and it's operating at a faster rate. The TCV is a solenoid which basically oscillates at a higher rate to maintain proper boost levels. The easiest way to access the TCV is by going under the car so you will need drive on ramps to safely elevate the vehicle. It's best that the car is cool as you are working around the turbo and exhaust which can be hot. Remove a plastic belly pan on your vehicle. There will be two screws in the subframe, another two in the fender wells, and finally three along the front bumper. Start with the rear and work your way forward. There are tabs which lock the pan onto the subframe. Once the screws are removed, pull the pan out. Next you will need to remove a lower charge pipe for the turbo. There will be three 10mm bolts in total, all the same length, which holds the pipe in place. First is a lower one by the transmission. Next is the two remaining bolts at the front of the oil pan. All can be accessed using a 3 8 drive ratchet with a 3 inch extension. Using a 7mm socket or a standard screwdriver, loosen the gear clamps which connects the metal pipe to the rubber fittings. First on the front connection, then on the rear connection closer to the turbo. The rubber connections may be stuck in place. Twisting the connection does help break it free, then disconnect the pipe from its location. Disconnect at the rear and remove the pipe. Place it somewhere safe so dirt or debris doesn't fall inside. Next using a 7mm to disconnect the connection at the turbo housing. Removing this will give you more room to work. Then remove the rubber pipe. While the components are removed, here's a pan overview of the turbo area as a reference. Giving you a close up view as you can see here is the turbo outlet and just past that is the TCV with the rubber hose connections. It simply slid into place over a metal bracket. It can be a bit tough to remove, I find using a standard screwdriver to help expand the plastic then push it off. If the old valve gets damaged, it's not an issue as it's already faulty and will be getting replaced. Once removed, there will be an electrical connector on the TCV. Press the metal wire clip down and then pull the connector off. There will be three different hoses which need to be removed. IPD does supply new clamps, so if yours are rusted like mine, there's no need to buy replacements. I find it's easiest to remove these clamps with a small compact interlocking or slip joint pliers. First slide the clamps off. As each hose is disconnected, replace each clamp before reconnecting the lines. The line should be marked on the valve, however, my markings did wear off. I did find some markings on the hoses, but you can also follow the lines to the locations and determine each of their functions too. A mirror is certainly handy for this. As mentioned earlier, the replacement turbo control valve came from IPD USA and this is their heavy duty replacement. This upgraded unit is intended to provide stable boost and exceeds capacities over the stock TCV. IPD's TCV is designed to handle higher boost levels such as 16 to 17 PSI and is built for a harsh high heat environment and has Viton seals. IPD includes all the necessary information and items needed for the installation such as detailed instructions, new clamps, fittings, mounting bracket with fasteners and the new HD TCV. Assemble the TCV, first I install the hose connections. Snug each of the fittings down using a wrench and don't over tighten them as they're only plastic and you can damage them. I did apply a small amount of sealant to the threads. While it shouldn't be needed, it's just an added step for reassurance. Then using an allen wrench and wrench, install the bracket. The washers will need to be on the nut side. A view once it's assembled. 
The fittings may need to be adjusted once everything's in place. Make sure they are snug and won't leak. With the supplied rubber sleeve, cut it to size for the bracket on the car. It should be about 1.5 inches in length. One vacuum line did need to be extended by 2 inches. The best way to access the line is through the passenger side fender well. There will be a plastic barrier that needs to be removed which provides a little extra room. There is a tab on the top back side, pull back and then slide it down. This is for the fitting on number 1 for the turbo compressor. This is a very tight area to work. I have found needle nose pliers to be best for accessing the clamp on the hose. This was the only line that required a longer replacement. The line required for the replacement was a 732 or 5mm will work as well. If all the lines are being replaced, 3 feet of rubber line should be all that's needed. I used a light amount of rubber safe silicone spray to help install the hoses as they can be a tight fit. Be sure to put those clamps on before pushing those hoses in place. Each of the ports are numbered and IPD has a labeled diagram printed directly on the valve with color coding, making the installation extremely easy. The red line for the turbo compressor is after the impeller, so on the positive pressure side. Yellow is for the wastegate actuator, and finally blue is for the intake tube. This is before the impeller for the supply on the turbo. If you wish, you can also relocate this for a more accessible location. All the hoses would need to be replaced with the correct length. If your current lines are deteriorated, then replace as needed. Cable ties may be required to pull back the electrical connector and vacuum lines away from the axle or any other components which may damage the hose. Plug in the electrical connector for the TCV. Here's a reference clip on the top of the turbo. Here you can see the actuator and the intake tube vacuum line which is used for fitting number 3. Reinstall the rubber connection onto the turbo and tighten the upper gear clamp. Install the lower charge pipe into both the rubber fittings. Ensure it is fitted correctly. Then tighten the clamps. The clamps can also be tightened after the pipe is bolted in place if you wish. Now install the bolts onto the transmission and oil pan. Considering these bolts are going into aluminum, a medium grade thread locker can be used to help prevent the bolts from seizing. Then tighten the bolts. I did take the car for a test drive before installing the belly pan to ensure everything is functioning correctly. In IPD's detailed instructions, they do outline Volvo software learning procedure. Drive the vehicle for 5 minutes without developing any boost to allow the engine to warm up. In a safe and appropriate place, accelerate the vehicle to approximately half of its maximum boost level and hold it there for 5 to 10 seconds. Then decelerate to below 48 km per hour or 30 miles per hour. Repeat this 4 times, turn the engine off and wait for 12 minutes. For optimum results, this procedure should be performed twice. Once the vehicle is performing correctly, reinstall the belly pan, clip the rear side into the subframe first, then reinstall the fasteners and tighten. If the problems do persist, you may have a vacuum line that's not hooked up correctly, damage to vacuum lines, boost leaks, faulty actuator, an actuator which requires an adjustment, etc. Here's a view of the old TCV and as you can see it does have a crack in the casing. Thank you to IPD for supplying me with the HD TCV for this video. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.